Hi friends, yesterday Pastor Jeff began chapter three in Genesis, which is the introduction of sin into creation through the garden, in the garden of Eden, by Adam and Eve as they were led astray by the serpent. The serpent often gets depicted as the great tempter or Satan, and we can have our theological discussions at a different time, whether that's Satan or not. But regardless, we find Adam and Eve in the garden being tempted by the serpent, and that's where our scripture continues today. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruits looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Eve wasn't out looking for trouble. Eve wasn't looking to be led astray, and quite frankly, I don't believe that she was looking to be disobedient to God. And yet, that's where she, and then ultimately her husband, Adam, found themselves being led astray, being disobedient to God and what he has laid out for for them and for us ultimately. You see, they knew what God had said to them. Do not eat from this fruit of this tree and you can have everything else. And yet they focused on that one thing that they couldn't have, those that boundary, the rules that God had laid out for them to protect them, to keep them safe. And yet here came temptation knocking at their proverbial door. The serpent says, did God really say that? Really? How about you try this instead? Here is why, and lay lay out all the justifications and the reasons and the temptations and why it's okay to do this. And maybe you, you can be like God. You know, God isn't so special. You know best. In fact, you can be just like God. He was ultimately deceived. She received misinformation. The truth was spun on its head. The truth was there. She knew what was there. She desired to know the truth, and yet she felt that she knew better because the serpent made it seem oh so delicious and oh so has to be the truth. It's, it's too good to be true, so it has to be true, and yet we know that to not be true. We think we know more than God. Eve wanted to be like God because she was convinced by the serpent. And then once she ate the fruit, she then passed it along to her husband. And ultimately that's what we do too, right? We sin, we know what we're supposed to do. We know how God doesn't want us to act. We know what the straight and narrow path is, the path that leads to life. And yet, as, as Jesus says, that the gate to hell is, is wide and easy, but the path to God, it is narrow and difficult. And we often choose that easy path. The same happened here. Eve was, fell into deception. She accepted the temptation and then she wanted to share it. We do that same thing with our own sin. We, we talk ourselves into what we know to be wrong, but yet we justify it. We, we make reasons and we say, oh, it'll, it'll be okay just this time. Hey, how about you join along in my sin too? We don't package it like that. We package it to to sound beautiful and easy and fun. And hey, why not? Everybody's doing it. And then that person we get to join in with us. And then our sin suddenly doesn't seem that big of a deal because now two of us are doing it. And we, we expand that again and oh, everyone's doing it. We know better than God. Friends, I think we can see how this parallels in our in our contemporary settings, in our culture, and in our current events unfolding in in America. I hope and pray that we all stop and pause and, and listen to those temptations that we are hearing, to discern the truth, to actually make sure we are hearing God in our decisions and not the serpent. Friends, I I hope this finds you well. I hope you take time today and every day to, to meditate upon God's word, to pray to God and to ask him to lead us so that we may not be led astray. Friends, as always, may God be with you until we meet again.